Hello, everyone. Welcome to News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I have with me today Franklin Tucker, the editor and publisher of the Belmontonian, Belmont's online source for hyperlocal news. Franklin, transparency seems to be the word of the day in uh, Belmont's town government. Can you tell us what's going on? In, uh, in in recent weeks, uh, especially after the um, the uh, uh, recent town election and the, the defeat of the um, uh, override attempt, we've been hearing a lot more in terms of uh, each board and, and each committee saying that there needs to be more uh, transparency. That that may that may have been one of the reasons why people didn't understand uh, uh, the need or didn't realize the need. For the override, and 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 and, and you could see it in the, in the in the school committee saying that you know we need more transparency in, in our budget. We need, um, and we say in the select board who 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 are making um, who are saying that you know we need to have our um, uh, agendas out and, and and things like that. Uh, and, uh, an interesting <clears throat> an interesting thing that happened was um uh, we saw that uh, with the financial task force saying that you know the town should come out quarterly with. Um, the uh, big um, uh, capital budget requests that are coming soon. Um, you know, these are things that you usually hear maybe once a year at, at town meeting, and you kind of, you know, you, you kind of remember that, oh, there's a rank that needs to be done and things like that. But uh, they're saying there should be a reliable way of saying, you know, on a quarterly basis, they were saying they were, were discussing or suggesting. That, that people realize that uh, there's a lot of uh, issues within town that need to be in, that need to be addressed. And uh, just uh, off the top of um, Floyd Carmen's head, you know, he said, you know, if you look at uh, uh, the, the needs that the, the town are having with, with capital in, uh, capital uh, items, you have the Chenery Middle School uh, roof uh, and and the HVAC system, the library project, ice rink. The uh, tennis courts, the um, uh, Bel Belmont Light uh, building, which is across the street from the town hall, the landfill, you know, it seemed to be off the radar. That shouldn't be off the radar. That should be what people should be thinking about. You know, how much money is it going to take to um, to uh, uh, bring online the uh, McLean affordable housing, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, new neighborhood that's going to be up in the, in, in the McLean's. Um, and, and just the financial impact of the new high school, you know, do we, it, 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 just to tell people, you know, if we don't have a special, if we don't have a person doing the operations um, uh, full time, how are, you know, are we going to even be using this new building uh, efficiently in terms of heating and, and, and operations and, and everything like that? So I think you're seeing a bigger push and... Um, uh, but what, what I'm hearing is that there is a wealth of information that people in the know know, but isn't available to the, the public, hasn't I, routinely been made available to the public. And I think they see that that was an issue. Uh, I think uh, there's a, there are a lot of uh, 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 a lot of people in town government and in, on the boards who, who, who felt that people didn't under, uh, well, people didn't realize the issue that was at hand. And then if they did, they would be more receptive to, um, you know, a, a, an override and how that override would affect these issues. Um, they also feel that there, there is a need for transparency, you know, that, that, that uh, they should be more, um, <clears throat> you know, forthcoming with documents and uh, uh, just simple things like uh, having uh, uh, the agenda material out for the public online. It's simple things, but things that, that will, that her, certainly make people understand how important these issues are. And we will have continuing uh, uh, coverage because the, the, the word transparency isn't going away anytime uh, soon. Let's talk about the school committee. The school committee is beginning to grapple with the, uh, uh, the budget cutbacks uh, associated with a no vote on the override. And sports is uh, one of the topics of, topics of conversation. It certainly was at the latest uh, school committee meeting. I, uh, what, what, what occurred was uh, um, uh, uh, Superintendent Phelan um, uh, basically is flushing out where the cuts are going to come. And there's uh, $2.1 million dollars in cuts that have to occur. Um, he, uh, the, week before, uh, the last time they met, they, they talked about uh, uh, specific areas where they were going to cut a, a, in salary positions. 
the 11 positions um, uh, at the uh, elementary, middle school, and high school. And this week they went into uh, the other big uh, pocket of money that they were looking at, and that had to do with uh, athletics and arts. So the athletic department, you would see, you know, uh, the elimination of uh, freshman athletics. Uh, you, uh, there would be um, uh, a limited uh, schedule. You know, there are many, if you follow sports in this town, uh, you know that uh, many of the teams play outside the, the Middlesex League to, to gain, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, experience and uh, competitiveness, you know, with other teams. Uh, that would be suspended because, you know, you can save on transportation and, and hiring referees and things like that. They wouldn't be uh, um, uh, replacing equipment and, and, and other items like that. Um, uh, yeah. they, would also, they would also be taking a lot of money from uh, the, the, the reserve funds um, that, that help athletics. But and on the art side, um, you will see about a third of all art clubs at the uh, middle school and the high school uh, eliminated. That would be about two, two or three clubs at the middle school and 10 clubs at uh, the high school. And now, uh, one, that's of, what, one of our new school committee members uh, has a, a sort of a different approach to all of this. Right. Uh, Meg Mara already, um, she uh, was the uh, really the, the, the only person, uh, the only member who said let's keep the cuts at, the, at a minimum because what we're what we're also seeing is that many of the established members of the, of the uh, school committee have come out uh and and saying to uh um uh, superintendent Phelan, if we have to if we have to make cuts let's cut the athletics department even more cut it to the bone you know maybe even cut sports altogether out because that's a lot that's a chunk of money that's about one million dollars and uh, so we can save core positions uh, um, Ms. Morari said, you know, this is not a good time to do it, especially after coming out of COVID. You know, you have ninth graders who, are, who learn a lot from joining these clubs and joining sports. Um, she also, she said, you know, this is more of a social emotional issue for a lot of students. That's something that uh, uh, Superintendent Phelan has always said. You know, he said that for a lot of times, um, uh, it is the extracurriculums that bring kids, that make kids want to come to school. It's the uh, best part of the day, you know. That's not to say they're not getting a good education in, in the core curriculum, but it's something that really uh, excites them to, to, to be part of a theater or, or to, to um, play a sport, you know. Uh, so there was some acknowledgement of that. And, that, and um, I think we're seeing that uh, even though there, that cuts may be coming, uh, they should be kept, uh, at least one member thinks it should be kept to a minimum. And one of the factors that will affect all of this, and there's an ongoing conversation, is the receipt of federal funds. Uh, that, that's right. There are three. There are th <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the school committee asked um, uh, Superintendent Phelan to be creative in terms of uh, finding what we could do with, with other sources of money. Now there's two sets of money that goes directly to schools. Um, that's emergency money. Um, and uh, the, the school will be applying for that money. And I think it's like about $1.4 million. Um, now there's a lot of money that, um, then a lot of that money is going to COVID expenses. And, and the town does have some COVID expenses that they're, go that they're uh, called priorities. That is gonna be like summer school. Um, uh, uh, summer school for, you know, getting kids caught up with it educationally. Um, and nurses they want next year, they want social workers and they want a beefed up remote um, uh, program. So, you know, they've got that money about, you know, $800,000. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they're thinking that, you know, maybe if we were creative about where we spend our money, maybe we don't spend it all on, or maybe we don't sp won't spend a million dollars on testing. Uh, maybe we won't need it because of the vaccine. Um, maybe we won't need tents because, you know, DESI will allow, you know, closer contact. So they're thinking that there's one scenario where they, they, they will, they'll use that emergency schooling aid and they'll use it and, and basically hire a, a retain, I should say, some of the teachers that are thinking about laying off the 11, the 11 FTEs uh, uh, for the next year. They'll, they'll bring, a, you know, half of those back or, or you know, five or six back. Um, but there's also the one that they're really looking at, and this is something that uh, the people in the no campaign for the override had said, and that was um, the American Rescue uh, uh, Act, the American Rescue Plan. 
uh, that uh, President Biden signed in, in November where $8 million was coming to Belmont. Well, you know, it, 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 Dr., uh, Mr. Phelan said that, uh, you know, if that money can't be fudgeable, if that, if, if, if that money will go to the town, if, if that money is then determined that you can use it for schools and, and put it to the bottom line, he'll use all of it. He'll use everything he can. And he'll bring back all the teachers and the teachers that he had thought he was going to bring. He'd bring those people back, uh, pay off the COVID funds uh, and use any of the spare change and some kind of strategy for the next two <laughs> next two uh, the year even further. But those have, you know, that's just a lot of uh, a lot of hope. You know, you have to have uh, you have to have a lot of faith in the, in the, in the government giving you that money, because uh, right now we don't there's no guidelines and no criteria we don't even know if that money is can be even given to the schools so um i think he was uh saying you know this is the best hope for us but if it doesn't happen we're, we know what we're going to be cutting so um in many ways i think he was saying um look we don't know if this is coming and even if it does come this is one-time funds you know he and he said if we hire if we hired those 11 teachers back uh with the um american rescue fund we're going to just have to fire him after one year. <laughs> but he said, he said it in a funny way. He said, it's like a car crash. You know, you crash your car and you, but you have a car, you know, ready to go, but you don't use it. You know, you would always use that car. And he said, we'd always take that money, any money we have to bring back teachers, sure. even if it's just for one year. Great. Well, thanks for bringing us up to date. We've been speaking with Franklin Tucker, the editor and publisher of the Belmontonian. You've been watching News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I'll talk with you again next time.